the price of a tag picture. Put, took out the oil cans. Now I got oil in both places from both the drain and where the oil filter goes because I literally just purchased that stuff. So it's still in the mail. Put it somewhat back together for the tag picture as well. That carb, we, we're gonna have to mess with this. I'm not sure if I'm gonna have to use carb cleaner to unseize that, uh, those cables out of there or if I use transmission fluid suggested to me by Chris. Uh, we'll see, but that's still a remaining problem. This is part two of, I think, a part two series. I don't think we're gonna really need any more parts. We'll get it together by the time I get the other parts in. So this guy, I'm gonna hit up the car cleaner. Back you up a little bit and I'll hit it with a little bit more force. Let free it up that quick. Doesn't look like it. Well, I guess we'll let that sit for a little bit, and then if that doesn't do it, then we'll hit it with tranny fluid. I'll move on to this battery bracket I showed you guys on the last, the, the first part of tearing this trashed Yamaha part. The, the bottom portion here that is covered by the nice, big, beefy tire is actually broken. One of the welds snapped, or it might even be bent a little bit. So it's just these three bolts. We should be able to see what the heck's going on with it. So here is what this bracket looks like. Now the battery that was in here, you guys saw it had a chunk missing out of it. Also, uh, the battery that I purchased is slightly wider than the previous one. The last one I think was uh, three and three eighths wide and the one that I purchased is three and a half inches wide. So one more eighth, hopefully that won't make a difference once I fix this. And we have a tube in this tire. So the tube or the tire, fits it sits a little bit taller and less wide because if it sits wide with less air in it that eighth of an inch is going to hinder us slightly but it looks like are we just missing a piece or does it just okay that's how it works so this little tab looks like used to be welded up into there or tacked so you just gotta bend that out clean it up and weld it I guess just a hammer is going to do it. So we got some welding done and what I did was I tacked the original spot that was broken and I also laid a small bead horizontally there for a little bit more strength 
Now I'm going to go ahead and paint this thing. I'm not going to paint the entire thing because when you do stuff like this, in my opinion, when you have something that's not in the best condition, you don't want to just start doing like pieces like this completely um, so that it looks brand new because then it just stands out like a sore thumb and then it makes everything else look, look like crap. So if you just keep the crap uh, consistency, nothing sticks out, but yet things can be approved upon. Like there's a difference between uh, restoring something and like, you know, improving it, making it a little bit, a little, making it a little more sexy. And that's kind of all we're trying to do here. And plus, you know, this thing doesn't, didn't run, hasn't run. And this carburetor is really blowing my mind. You guys probably won't believe this one, but I actually had this sent to me probably, probably a year or two ago. And it's from uh, X Xavier. So probably Xavier. F I F Xavier F. Thank you very much. You said it's probably a year, two years ago. I don't know if it has a date on this, but it was fan mail, and I appreciate it. And I definitely make it a point to save stuff and keep your guys' names on it because you guys, the least you deserve is a shout out, and I really appreciate it. But this thing, I think, is the exact. Granted, this diameter isn't the same. But I think it's the same four wire setup on the other side here, which would be a huge, huge plus. I chased it right before I started filming this just to see if it might work. And you can see it's got this square body here. Uh oh, or does it turn into something funky here? It turns into something circular, it looks like. Okay, so that's the male. And this says female. Dang it. I was getting all pumped. But what we could do if this fits in this hole up here. If it fits up here, then we can send it. If not, time for the one handed approach. Does that fit in that freaking hole? It does not, but we could bore it. I'll first start by messing with the continuity, seeing how this switch works, and then seeing if there is a potential for this to just be cut. Or it, it should be. I mean, we got four wires, four wires, just we gotta match up the right wires to the right ones. So. Probably red and black, right? There we go. Uh, so red and black makes connection when it's on. When it's off, it does not. Let's see if that same thing. My battery's dying in my multimeter. Wiring is one of those things where I like to well, it's not that I like to, but uh, cussing arises. And um, I apologize in advance for any bleeps. Okay. More the merrier. Here's the setup. Hopefully my, of course the heat gun's not hooked up. I have a, like a five or six plug thing here. And of course the heat gun is the only one that doesn't want to be plugged in. That should be good.
please excuse me, but I went to plug this in and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to pull on this. I pulled it and the carb cleaner did the trick. I was able to pull that one out. So now let's see if I can pull. Nope. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that one's still in there. Choke doesn't want to be unchoked. But now I want to test. Um, I'm going to put my battery charger back on this thing and check to see if I wired that correctly. We're going to do a quick test. We don't have oil on this thing, so we're not going to run it. And we're gonna, not going to turn it over too many times. But we got to see if our key is going to work. When I originally was doing it, there just wasn't that many wires. It is, you know, it's it's not. First of all, it doesn't fit in this hole. Second of all, there's not enough wires. And third of all, I pulled the wire out. So this guy is not going to be used and I'm going to have to buy a different one. I'm getting ready to put the oil plugs back in because I'm going to push this thing outside. Look at the specs on that thing. Like there are some considerable flat, uh, like debris on there. That's... Not necessarily good, but I just wanted to show you that before I threw them in. Got my jug of ATF over here. Gonna pour some in the cap, and I'll dump it down into there. See if this will really fix the issue here. Ah, yeah, it's super full. Let the red, red stuff take over. I'm noticing here, I'm putting this, I'm getting ready to put this on. This looks like this originally had a ground on it. It's got this little piece on there. I don't see where an old ground used to be at this point in time. But it sparked without it, so I don't think we have too big of an issue. It's just, that's what it looks like there used to be there. Unfortunate that this box didn't come with its band. I don't know what I'm gonna do about that. If you guys have any ideas, please leave them in the comment section below. Probably just gonna go with a bungee cord. Maybe I have a yellow one. That'd look kinda neat. There we go. Our box is installed and you can see with the current PSI situation, we only have a small gap in between there. Probably, I don't know, maybe 3 16 of an inch, which is not good at all. But hopefully the, the tube, once I put the tube in here, it makes that tire taller and not as wide. I've decided I'm just gonna go for it. It's been about 10 minutes with the red stuff in here. I'm just gonna yank. That doesn't even look that bad. So we'll clean both of that up. And this, I'm actually, I'll take this right off. If it'll allow me to. cable yeah it's got something going on in here there's like some copper wire hanging onto that which doesn't really need to be there but oh the cable feels really good I'm pushing this the thumb throttle that feels really good so cool we don't have any cable issues it's just bad fuel 
it just has like varnish like a real thick layer of it I don't want to see what my ultrasonic cleaner would do it do to it by itself Let's see what we're at for an adjustment half one half two two and an eight Everything is stuck in this thing. There's the spring, but the washer. There's the washer. Okay. What the heck, man? Do I even dare to try to pull that out? There will be a little break. Oh, like nothing. Wow, that didn't give me too much of an issue. And that needle didn't give me too much of an issue. It was just the slide. The slide! Screwdriver's no, can you tell? That's another JIS screwdriver. If you guys want to link to any of my tools or anything that, anything that I use in my videos and off my videos, check out the links in the description. Should I pull it out? Maybe. <sighs> Taking it off camera for extra pulling power. Yeah, that don't want to come out yet. Maybe after rinsing the ultrasonic cleaner, it'll buff itself stuff out. But in here, it don't look too bad. It's mostly in here. But I'm gonna fire up my ultrasonic cleaner, throw all this stuff in there, and we'll see what it looks like after probably five or six hours in there. I have everything in the ultrasonic cleaner. I have the float just floating around. <laughs> the carburetor itself is right here. The bowl is right here. Then I have a whole bunch of different uh, jets and stuff in this. I don't know if it really does affect it too much if it's in a separate bin. I would think not too much. But I have one of the jets out to compare that to the stuff that's in the plastic thing itself. This only runs on 30 minute increments. I'll turn the heat on. Uh, and just keep on going through 30 minute increments. We'll do probably four or five hours. We'll check the stuff out and see if it's clean. And start your engines. Oh, right off the bat. Look at that. Right off the bat. It's coming out of there too, so. It's firing off of that one, and this one is calmly coming off of it, but you can see we got some serious breakdown right off the bat. Four or five hours later, we're going to have a brand new car, ladies and gentlemen. I don't really like the zip tie look, so I'm gonna do something about that. I mean, it's not like it 
it just falls off, which I anticipated. But it will move around. This is steel behind here. I'm also testing my varnish remover to see if it'll take off the blue and not the yellow there. I think what I'll do... Actually, is that supposed to... Is there supposed to be some brackets back here? If, n if not, what I'll do is I'll make my own brackets so that way... Actually, it looks like they do have brackets already on here. Basically, I'm going to see what's going on under here. Because that won't be acceptable when you're riding. It's got to at least stay still. I can't believe how easy these bolts come out of here. They're muddy and stuff. But the quality of the bolt itself is awesome. I don't think that's original because it's got a 10. Or if it is, there's just a lot of rust on it. Like, that's really impressive. One of the dirtiest spots where things can really just fall apart. And it wants to cooperate with me. This is insane. Yeah, so for some whatever reason, they use a different size nut there. They use an 11 on the front and a 10 on the back. And this is a nut, and they use bolts on the back. Can see what's going on with this guy. I think I just gotta take this bottom, it's probably a JS bolt out. I'm gonna file the head off of this screw so that way when I back it off, it'll actually go through the nut and not catch. Gotta love rust. Now I'll back it out 90 degrees and I'll hit the other sides then it should come right out our situation. Sweet. This bracket, you can see the nut is still welded onto that. This one, the nut is still welded to that. However, this guy is broken right off. So what, all I'm going to do, uh, two out of three is passing barely, but for this situation, headlight weighs nothing. We'll bend that guy back up. Then we'll have three points. And uh, we'll be good. Can't believe how easy that nut came out, or that bolt came out. And I can't believe how easy that screw came out. Awesome. Hopefully the bulb's still good in this thing. Clean this guy off. And I have three different yellows behind you guys. I have, looks like a John Deere yellow, a school bus yellow, and then a really bright, probably sunflower yellow. I'm gonna try them, see if any of them kinda match the yellow that Yamaha went ahead and made their plastics. And if they don't match, then A, I could go and see if I could find something that matches better. Or B, paint it black. So, I don't really want to paint it black, but at the same time, if we have to, we have to. 
We have two of the totally opposite things going on here. Getting painted, getting removed. This has been sitting for about 15 minutes. And you can see it's starting to peel. Not everywhere, but in the concentrated areas where that stuff is sitting, it's starting to peel off pretty good. Hopefully it doesn't screw up the plastic color. While that's doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and check the brakes on this thing. To get in the way of the tires. And uh, not very much weight here. So, yeah. Not the best, but they are, they are doing some. Probably just need to get knock some of the rust off. I'd say that's pretty good. Really true. I'll tighten that one up a few turns. Yeah, that's sweet. Front brakes. Oh yeah, that just needs a little adjustment. After a little bit more than an hour, wow, that looks impressive, very impressive. Sweet, what else we got? Here's one of the jets. Yeah, not as impressive, but still it's cleaning up. Throw some varnish on there. Oh yeah, they're cleaning up just as good inside the plastic as they are not in the plastic. Uh, next thing is, that's looking pretty good. Don't you think? This guy, for whatever reason, is taking a long time for that varnish remover to and, and paint remover to do its job. But that's that's sitting there. And this guy really has nothing else to be done other than washed up. But we can't really wash it at this point because then we have nooks and crannies open. I didn't want to wash it to begin with. You guys know because it's winter. But I thought I was only going to make a two-part series out of this and then a final ride. But we got enough content today to make uh, three parts. I was not thinking the plastics was going to take that long. And the carburetor was going to continue to give us that same issue. But I'm glad we got some content out for you guys. So this will be a three-part series. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any information about this or if you guys want to see any particular thing or if you guys have any advice, please leave it in the comment section below. I like responding to you guys. Also, uh, I mentioned this in the last 3 Machines production. I'm running a, a small little thing before Christmas for... If you spend $25 before shipping, you get a free beanie, a free winter hat, a $10, per, a $10 value for free. If you want to go to 3dmachines.co or machinemerch.com. But yeah, we'll fire this thing up. Three uploads and then a final ride, I'm hoping, unless something crazy happens. I didn't want to change the rear differential fluid yet because I want to change that after kind of putting a little bit of uh, work on it so that way it's a little bit warmer because that stuff tends to be thick AF. So stay froggy fresh, stay super fly. Until next time, 3D Machines out.